When you talk about the 90s, which many people call the pinnacle of bodybuilding, in an era where everyone had crazy original physiques, competing with all-time bests like Ronnie Coleman, the lineup was so stacked, you can't just leave names out. One of those names is Tom Prince. This man pushed the limits. Why take the risk? But some bodybuilders are taking too far. Because everyone wants to win. Everybody's looking for that little edge. If you're slacking off on the day of the competition, you're talking about a whole year training down the toilet. They can make a difference from fourth place to first place. They would resort to anything, not bodybuilders, everybody, to get to be the best they could be. Anything to be the best, to win, I'm just looking to get myself in shape and be ready that day. Philosophy to it, in other words, just let's control what we can control. I can control my workouts, you know, my diet, you know, how much cardio I'm doing, how much I'm posing. You know, as far as like my placing, you, know, you, you can't control that. But all you can do is get yourself in shape. He only shined as a pro for five years. He was hardcore. Okay, back to the heavyweights. When Tom Prince walks into a room, he gets more than just casual looks and started training just two years ago. All of them are so good. That, uh, you know, just because you're second or third place doesn't mean you're a bad bodybuilder, a bad athlete, doesn't mean you don't look good. The only person I really ever have to beat is, you know, in my mind, is myself. We need to make every, every, take every step possible to make sure that judging is always fair. Now, I personally think that judging is fair. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, but that doesn't mean we still shouldn't keep looking at it. In a subjective sport, where you're looking at something subjectively, if you have the same judges looking at it, then, then that subject, subjectivity never changes. You know, they always have the same point of view. Yeah. So that's why you need to keep the, the fresh judges. I, I understand what he, where he's coming from. Yep. One set we used like some real, a little bit of real weight. Tom was probably, you know, one of the bright stars of the 1990s. Uh, you know, Tom was, a, was an intellectual, he was a really smart guy, and he really burst onto the scene. A lot of people don't know the NPC Nationals. That was the year, uh, basically, Don Long had the basic lock for the victory in that show. And after the first call-out, you know, they almost, they'd gone through all the call-outs on stage, and Tom, no one knew who Tom was. Tom wasn't even in the first call-out. And then all of a sudden, I remember uh, one of the judges, he said, I want to see this guy. I don't even know if anyone knew his name. They had called out the top guys again and they threw Tom Prince in there. And people realized this guy was unbelievable. During that's, that's, I think, when the uh, bodybuilding world first was made aware of who Tom Prince was. And but, you know, for me personally, it's, uh, I think the Olympia was never something that, it almost never seemed real, you know? Public think that bodybuilders are just like stupid muscle heads. You can't really turn pro and be stupid at the same time. Because when you get into bodybuilding, when you first start going to the gym, you know, you never even think like, well, maybe one day I'll be competing at the Olympia, I got a chance to make top 10 at the Olympia. Sure, that's too, uh, you know, you can't touch that or whatever. You know, I thought one day I could be a pro, but, you know, I mean, but the Olympia is so far out there, like, you never even dream of that. It wasn't until I actually turned pro 
I started thinking about the Olympics, like, wow, I'm a very good shot to do this. It took a couple years to be able to, to figure out how to get it right. Anytime you're at the height of your career and you're doing something that you really love, which, and Tom loved bodybuilding, and you get that taken away from you, it, it's hard because you have to try to then redefine who you are, almost recreate who you are. 2002, you have your last show, and then you just kind of disappeared, man. What? Give us the skinny on You know what? My, my personality is such that I am either all in or all out. You know, I remember my, the first time Pumping Iron was on uh, PBS when I was 10 years old. You know, my dad actually you know, brought me upstairs to watch it, and uh, I mean, he and I sat there and watched Pumping Iron. I fell in love with bodybuilding from that day, and um, you know, I knew, you know, it took a few more years to get into it. I didn't really get into it until I was 16. That was really where it started. And I knew from that, from that, like from t at the age of 10, I knew I wanted to be a bodybuilder. You're only as good as the guy you stand next to. You stood next to some of the best in the world. Right. Uh, it's hard to believe you only had a five-year pro run. I wrote it till the wheels fell off, wheels fell off. Like they tell you, you're done, like I'm done, I'm good. I did everything I wanted to do and then some. Night of champions, we played. I loved how you looked at, I thought you were free. It's always good to have that one show where you actually put it all together and you look your absolute best. The heaviest I ever got was 318. The most muscular Tom Prince is also the top heavyweight. After two second place finishes, Prince is king of the heavyweight. He was hardcore. Always kept it real. Someone who just loved the game. The daily grind of getting better against all odds. Other than doing cardio twice, eat my meals. <laughs>